Hey everybody, I recently had some friends in town and we were able to finally go check out Super Nintendo World. And I may do another review on the park later, but I actually just want to jump on here and talk about the power of band. Uh, so really quick, for those of you that don't want to spend 10 minutes watching a video finding out if you should or should not buy the power of band, let me address that really quick. If all you're going to do is the Mario Kart ride and or tool, uh, Toad's Cafe, no, you don't need the power of band. Save yourself the $43. Uh, if you want to experience the park at its full potential, that includes doing like the mini games, collecting the stamps, doing Bowser Jr.'s castle. Yes, you absolutely need to get a power-up band. So I hope that helps. And for those of you that are sticking around and want to learn more about the power-up band, let's jump into it. Okay, so the question is, are the bands worth it? Uh, well, that depends on your personal preference. If you're gonna judge these off of quality alone, then I would say, yeah, they're probably worth the $43. Uh, that's 43 after tax. Um, these things are basically uh, slap bracelets. Like if you if you grew up in the 80s like I did, uh, you'll probably remember slap bracelets. I had like 20 of them that I'd wear at a time. But they were essentially like measuring tape covered in like cloth. And these are essentially that, only covered in a, in a high durability rubber. And, you know, credit to Nintendo, they could have easily made these things cheap, uh, knowing that you probably are only visiting and you probably can't go to Universal Studios more than once or twice in a year. And so they could have easily made them cheap, made them la like made them so they could only last for a couple days, long enough for you to, to survive the trip and go home. Uh, but Nintendo didn't, and credit to them for that. Uh, they also have this high, like this heavy plastic right here. And I was wondering in line why it's like why it's so bulky and heavy considering that it's just the, the chip in there. And I concluded that it's likely to withstand the abuse that you're going to be putting this thing, this thing through throughout the park. So throughout the park, you're going to find these question mark blocks just like in, in the games themselves. And when you hit them, it's going to register a coin hit. Uh, and the way that you do that, you don't have to hit it hard, but you can't just tap it either. You actually have to like put some weight behind it, put some power behind it to make that register. And so these are clearly designed to handle the abuse that, uh, that will come along with hitting those question marks. So the next question is, are these worth it from an interactive perspective? Well... That depends on you. I will say this. You have to have this to get the full potential from the park. And the park is fully interactive and it's what makes the experience. So what happens is when you buy this, on the very back of this housing, there's a QR code. You can't, obviously can't see it here. It's on the actual wristband. But you scan that QR code and it's going to register that band to the theme park app. And within the app itself, it's going to keep track of everything that you do with this band. So there are challenges that unlock stamps, kind of like in Mario 3D World. So it'll be things like collect X amount of coins, hit all of the question mark blocks, meet the cast characters, and uh, that, all gets, that all gets tracked. I will say this. If you are into achievements and you want like 100% completion on this, 0% chance you can do this in one trip. Uh, one of the stamps requires that you go to the park during every single season of the year. So you have to go in that 12 month period, you have to go four separate times, one every, basically every three months. Which again, if you don't live in Los Angeles or soon to be Florida, um, that's not going to be easy for you to do. So just know if you're going for 100% completion, you're not doing it when you come out on one weekend. Uh, the other thing, <clears throat> as I mentioned, there are mini games. There's four mini games total. And when you beat a mini game, you get a virtual key. There's a hidden boss fight, which is Bowser Jr.'s castle. And in order to unlock that challenge, you have to have three of the virtual keys. So it doesn't matter which three mini games you do, but you do have to do and win uh, three of the four mini games. They're not that hard, uh, but just know they're not a guaranteed win either. I will say the Bowser Jr. fight is really cool. It's, it's a really cool thing that they did with that. There's also leadership boards that update every hour. Uh, your team is dependent upon the character of your wristband. So again, I am Team Yoshi. If, you're, if your team is the winner for that hour, you'll also get stamps. So again, this is something that's out of your control if you're going for that completion. Uh, uh, just know that that's dependent upon 
if there's enough people in the park with your character's wristband during that hour in order to take the leadership board for you to get that to get that stamp. So not guaranteed to get that in one weekend, but if you have to go back multiple times, if you're going for full completion, uh, you'll likely un unlock that stamp just naturally. So that's everything that this does within the park. Uh, but Nintendo actually added some functionality for outside of the park in that these also act as amiibos that you can use with your with your Switches. I haven't been able to find a list of games that these specifically work for, but what Nintendo's official statement is is that any game that has that character's amiibo functionality as an option, these will work with. So for me, I have Mario Kart, and I used this amiibo to unlock a Yoshi costume for my Mario Kart driver, but that's the only game I've, I've uh, been able to test, so I don't know what other games are out there. So if that helps justify the price, again, I know Amiibos are like 12 to $15. And so if you look at, if, if you're trying to justify the purchase and you're like, well, if it's $15 for the Amiibo that, and, and the band is $40, then that means I'm paying $25 to get park functionality. Again, that's going to be up to you to decide if, if the $40, $43 is worth it to you or not, uh, given, given the functionality that this, that this has both inside the park and outside the park. Uh, the other thing is that these do, you cannot delete the, the data on these. What I mean is that, like, if you wanted to borrow one, maybe your friend went to Universal Studios, and so you're like, well, maybe I can just, just borrow their band. Just know that any ach achievements, accomplishments that they did is going to stick with the band. And so if you're into achievements yourself, you're going to have to buy your own band. Um, if you're not into achievements, if you don't really care, you just want you just want to experience the park, but you don't want to spend the extra money, and you have access to a used one, again, like maybe your friend went, then yeah, just borrow their band, go check out uh, go check out Bowser Jr.'s Castle. Maybe they've already unlocked, and you can just go check that out instantly. You can play the mini games as many times as you want. So if they've already done the mini games, it's not going to lock you out of it. You can go through it as many times as you want. You can do Bowser Jr.'s Castle as many times as you want once you've unlocked that key. Um, and the keys stay with you, so you don't have to do the three mini games over and over to get multiple keys. You can just unlock them, get the keys, and you can go as many times as you want to Bowser Jr. And so, if that doesn't bother you to do that, just know also any achievements that you do that your friend may not have done will stick with it. So maybe the leadership board one is, is an example. So maybe you did the leadership board uh, and your friend didn't when they were there it's going to unlock the leadership board achievement for them. So be aware of that. And lastly, if you are a Nintendo collector and you collect everything that Nintendo makes, then yeah, it's a given. Uh, buy, buy all six of them. I have a feeling that anybody who's that hardcore of a collector, though, likely isn't watching my video to determine if they should or shouldn't buy it. But I just wanted to address it anyway, just in case. But yeah, there are... At this time, there's six of them. I doubt they're going to make any more characters, um, just given the fact that Tokyo has, and they've been open for a couple years now. The only thing that Tokyo has done is they've released a second, a two-year anniversary one, which is gold, and it's a Mario one. But it's still, to my understanding, it's still the same amiibo. Everything is the same. It's just, it's just gold. So I doubt they're going to add any new characters besides the six that are already there. But again, if you're one of those collectors, yeah, of course, buy them. So that's pretty much everything about the band. Again, it's easy for me to justify the price since I live in LA and the theme park is, you know, it's in my city. And it might not be as easy for you to justify it if you don't plan on going that often or you don't live near one or, or whatnot. I think I answered every question that I could think of. Please let me know if you have any questions that I didn't address or if you want like more details on something or, you know, something I left out. Let me know, I'll be happy to answer it. But again, guys, and if you do end up making it out to Super Nintendo World, let me know your thoughts. Uh, did you end up buying the band? Which character did you buy? And when everything is said and done, do you feel justified in the price or do you feel like the price was too much? Either way, let me know. Thanks again for watching, guys. I hope you have a good day and I will talk to you later.